Is this working? Hello? Am I alive? See if people when people get in here, they can let me know how it looks, how it sounds. Hopefully it sounds good because or it looks good. Oh my god, I was this stuff was messed up for a while. And I couldn't get the camera looked so bad. I can see my reflection in the glasses. Maybe I should take them off. Um What's up, Jay? Probably just chill here for a little bit, let people get in, we'll get into the mock drafts. I start talking just about like some of the stuff like Odo Beckham. You're alive. Thank you. Still new to this. I don't. Maybe I should. Let me see how this looks. I'm going to my phone real quick. Because pre before, man, it looked so bad, so bad. But I think it looks pretty good right now overall. So I'm not not too worried. Quick question. Who do you think will be our starting O line? Um, oh, did, I am live. Cool. Let me turn down the sound real quick. Right now, like, before the draft, because I think we're going to have a starting offensive lineman from the draft, but if I had to guess, that actually looks pretty good. Nice. I mean, obviously, Armstead at left tackle, Jackson at right tackle. I think Brewer starts at center. The guard spots are obviously the question mark. If I had to guess right now, I would say Isaiah Wynn at left guard and Driscoll at right guard. That's what I would do. And then have Eichenberg and Robert Jones be your backups. Uh because right now, those four guys at guard can fill in and be some solid depth, but I don't know if any of them are like high end starters. So I would take one high end starter guard either in the you know first second round, and then uh, have one of those guys be the other starters with everyone else kind of rotating in. I like how we're positioning the draft right now way better. Yeah, I, I've said this before. I think this is some of the best work I've seen the front office do with how they position themselves from free agency. Really, really impressed with how things were looking, and they really maneuvered the cap well. Did some things with some void years, brought people in, and they still have good cap this year, and it's not looking too horrible for the future. So definitely impressed with what they did. You think the Dolphins will trade down for the draft? That I don't know. I they haven't traded down a bunch. It's not like something we've seen Greer do a ton of, but it would be my first one of my top things to do in the first round would be to trade down because I think getting a pick in the third round would be huge. Third and fourth would love to see the trade down. Especially because I do think like some of the guys I really want at 21, like Fatanu, is going to be gone. Um, possibly maybe like Byron Murphy gone as well, like those types of players. Because guard and defensive tackle, I feel like, are two huge needs, and that would be... Uh, if those guys are gone, then I'm definitely looking to trade down, because I still feel... Cause I've done a lot of these mocks, and like even when there's players that are still available on the board, I'm like, oh, they're not going to be there. There's still other players who are like, oh, you just trade back, and I still feel like they're going to get some quality players. I agree. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Oh, um, we'll start. Maybe how many people are? It says like fourteen right now. I think we'll move this chat real quick. I think I'll start talking about like the Odell Beckham stuff. Maybe talk about them resigning River Craycraft, and then we'll get into the mock drafts and just do a bunch of them. I think just go through the first two rounds. I've got an Armstead, Driscoll, Win, Cotton, Brewer, Robert Jones, AJ, keeping nine a lot in the fifty three. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Um, Robert Jones, a right guard, yeah. Definitely possible. I think, you know, like players like Driscoll, Robert Jones, um, even Eichenberg, they're not all that far off from each other. I'd probably have Eichenberg for sure be depth. But I do think like Driscoll or Jones could start a right guard if just looking at the roster right now. You send big body receivers that are, I think with the receiver thing, it just, I do think they would like a big body or potentially like a tight end, like talking like Jatavion Sanders. I think he's an option at 55 if they want to go there in the draft. And he can be like, you know, a pseudo, like wide receiver, big body type tight end. Um, I wouldn't mind going someone like Xavier Leggett, another big body receiver that fits in the scheme. That to me, it's just if you fit within the scheme of the off offense, I'm fine with it. Like if they had Odell Beckham, you know, he's not the biggest guy, but. He's a third receiver to have. I think having a third receiver that can beat man-to-man -man coverage is super important, and he still has some juice left in the tank. He's a good route runner, has great hand, which is important. It's just I would not spend high-end money on Odell, for sure. Like It's all about the price. If he comes in on pretty cheap, I'm for it. If not, I would wait till the draft plays out and then see some other options. But yeah, I, I would like to bring in someone that's a little uh, bigger body, but still fits it within the speed part of the offense, can uh, break some tackles as well. Um, we only kept two tight ends in the original 53 last year. What do you see us doing tight end-wise? Um, I think probably three, if I had to guess. Probably, it depends if they draft one. I mean, Johnny Smith, for sure. 
Smythe and Julian Hill, I feel like, and then maybe they uh, have like Fordson and Connor possibly fight for a fourth spot or just be like a practice squad body. Uh, or they could still also fight Julian Hill because Julian Hill doesn't have like a guaranteed spot either. But I think they like what they have in Julian Hill, so I feel like they'll keep those three depending if they draft one like Sanders in the second. Because I know that was like definitely been offered. I'd offer OBJ four mil up to seven mil with incentives. Yeah, I think I just don't think he'd come on that. I'd probably offer like I probably wouldn't go over six mil with up to like nine incentives. That's probably the highest I'd go. But yeah, I mean, if he came on four mil for up to seven with incentives, I'd be all over that. Kind of wish we put Ike at center and make Brewer and Ike battle out for center. I mean, they might. I I just think looking back at their film last year, Eichenberg had his best games playing right guard. So if he did have to play, I would be down to play him at right guard because he was pretty inconsistent at center at times. But I do think as a depth center, it's it's fine for how he played. You think the Dolphins draft JPJ? Um, if he's best player available, I would be down to draft Jackson Powers Johnson. Just depends. Um for the yeah for that specifically i'm I'm all i'm a best player available guy go bpa take best player available all day long and uh that's that's where i'm at it, and it's like best player available but if they're like closely related then you know take the position that has more value to your team right now like say it's like an offensive line or a wide receiver or like the two best player availables uh in the first round i would probably lean offensive linemen if they're you know closely related uh rated on your board but if you think the receiver is way better, then take the receiver. That's just how I kind of feel about it. Yeah, Brewer would beat Eichenberg for sure. They, they they paid him too much for him not to beat him out anyways. Chop and BB is where I'm leaning right now. I'm not against that. Um, wouldn't be the worst draft. I like BB in the second. He's definitely got a nasty play style to him. I like guys that can be the mover in a running game. I think with Chop, super athletic, like freaky athletic explosive bend like better than you'll see he's just quite raw right now and doesn't really have like a pass rush plan which worries me a little bit with him that's why i would probably go like lot two over him if he was there but i don't think lot two's gonna be there anyways how do you feel about drafting a corner i mean i'm never against drafting a corner i don't think they should but knowing greer he loves drafting a corner earlier than and you know people think it's not a huge need so um what else before we get into the mock dress, one sec. Uh, what else did I say? I was into? Oh, I could talk about Craycraft. I like resetting Craycraft just as like, you know, either he doesn't make the team, you get him on minimum, and then, or he's your fifth receiver and he's pretty reliable, like fifth, sixth guy on the roster. Always a fan of bringing Craycraft back as like the fifth, sixth guy. Uh, reliable hands, understands the offense, and is a really good blocking wide receiver. So always a fan of bringing a river back. I never put a pass grade to go corner. Me neither. I actually wouldn't be mad if they took like Cooper DeGene because I do think Cooper DeGene's a good corner that can also play nickel and can also play safety. And the Dolphins do, I think, you know, I wouldn't be mad if the Dolphins took safety, but I'm never going to be mad if they take a good player, but I do think there's other positions of need. Like if they take a player I really like, it's but it's not a super like high position of need, like corner, uh, something like that, I'm not going to be mad, but I do think there would probably be better options. I think if yeah, Graham Barton, I'm all over Graham Barton for sure in the first round. Definitely. Make sure to like this video. Oh yeah, <laughs> leave a like. Also, does it say join on this video? Because I activated like the memberships. Like I'm not you know, guys don't need to join because I think it's like money or whatever. I just want to make sure it's like actually there, like a possibility. Uh any love for Matt Collins? Didn't Matt Collins sign somewhere else? Or he signed with the Bills, right? Yeah, I mean. Right? Yeah, Holland signed with Buffalo now, yeah. I mean, Hollins would have been a solid guy to bring back, but he is elsewhere. And let me see. Let me get up to this mock draft simulator. I have this database open. I go here. I go F11. Let me see. Did that switch screens? Let me, I don't have the chat open anymore. I don't have a second monitor. I need to get a second monitor for this for sure. Let me open up the stream on my phone real quick. Make sure it's switched up. It's showing me ads. Yes. Thank you guys in the chat. Or no, you might be responding to the other person, but yeah. I'm on mock draft database right now. I could go on uh, Pro Football Network, but it is kind of, it doesn't go like to the black screen. It does like a white screen, so it might flash bang you guys, but right now I don't think it really matters. We're just trying to test some stuff out. 
And I'm getting the longest ads ever on my own stream. <laughs> Let's make sure we got this right. Dolphins. 2024. We'll just do the first two rounds for now. And I mean, I'm getting fucking ads. Whatever. Enter the draft room. Dun, 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 dun. And then, yeah, so just go through 2020 or 21 and 55. Cool. You think, how do you think Graham will do that right guard? Because I believe if he, yeah, uh, Graham Barton, he's played every spot at Duke. Like he played left tackle this past year, but he's played literally every single offensive line spot. So I'm not worried about it. And I think he's a better fit at guard at the next level. So I'm not too worried about him uh, transitioning to playing left or right guard for the team. Gary Pichoretta is a Gen Z dude with shaggy hair, surf pants, and a skateboard hanging on the wall. <laughs> um, not quite. Not quite. Though I do... Mm, no, nah, I'm not really a, a skater. But I do uh, wakeboard and uh, snowboard a lot. Zach Frazier, center. Yeah, I like him as like a second round option. Uh, pretty well balanced technician. Let's start this draft. Start this mock draft. Probably going to get some trade options. Um, let's see what happens here. I'm going to uh, ignore the trades for now because I feel like the trades can be pretty unrealistic when it comes to these mock drafts. And let's see. Wow. Okay, so they had, wow, they let people get. Is that Chop Robinson's first name? Des Moines? Can you guys see this? How well can you guys see this? You guys can see it pretty well, I think. Yeah, so they have Latu and Fatanu. Oh my god. I feel like it's hard not to just take Troy Fatanu right away, but I took him in my last mock draft. Wide receiver first round. I mean, if he was best player available. <laughs> You're biased on Frazier. I get it. I mean, that is... He's a good player. I would not be... Matt, I just don't know if they're going to go for a center now. Because I think Frazier is more of a center only type player. I do think Powers Johnson can play some guard. Um, but if this is how the first round played out, I mean, I would run to this podium with Troy Fatanu, I'll be honest, like right away. It, let's say if Fatanu wasn't there, and then it was like Latu, Mims, Jackson Powers Johnson, I wouldn't be back. I wouldn't be against the idea of taking any of them or just, you know, maybe trading back a few spots because I could see people trying to trade up for players like Mims. I also like Noon. Uh, looks like Byron Murphy's gone. Let's just go through and talk about some other people. Chop Robinson, definitely an option. I wouldn't go Guyton or Mitchell at 21 personally. Graham Barton's an option. Um, oh, I actually want to talk about Darius Robinson for a little bit. Darius Robinson's interesting. He's like a big edge, like huge. He's like a tweener type. Like he can play edge and defensive tackle, play like a, you know, multiple different roles, versatility across the line. He could fit into that like missing edge to start the year while Julian or well Julian Jalen Phillips and Chubb are coming back from injury, so he can be your edge and then potentially slide into be defensive tackle when they're all back and healthy. Because I think he can play both. He's a solid run defender, has a lot of power that he uses on people. Sometimes he can be a little over, you know, reliant on that power, which is uh, an issue. But he would be an interesting draft pick, but I would rather take him trading back. But yeah, let's see who else is available. Worthy, McConkey. I like McConkey. I wouldn't be mad if they took McConkey on like a trade back, but I don't think they should. There's, I think there would just be better options at 21. But yeah, I would say right now, looking at this board, honestly, these top five is where I would be leaning. Latu, Fatanu, Mims. Mims is like an inexperienced player, but I'm a fan. So, I mean, what are you guys thinking out here at 21? Fatanu is my best case scenario. Yeah, I would, I would love powers. Just don't see Greer ever going center in the first. He's like Ogba. Oh, you're talking about Darius Robinson? Um, They have some similarities, but Darius Robinson is like, that guy's play strength is on a different level. And I also think he moves a little bit better as if you were going to move him in the interior. Good afternoon, Finn's up. What's up? Franklin, how you doing? Um, I took... I just feel like I'm just going to go Fatanu. I just have to. I feel like, you know, you get your yeah, A+. plus. You get your left guard starter right now. You start him at left guard. And then when Armstead retires, you get uh, your left tackle of the future. I just feel like he's such a good player. I don't think he will be there. But if he wasn't there, I would have gone law to... Um, Latu, or Marius Mims. If Fatano wasn't there, I actually would have heavily considered trading back. But yeah. 
I would like Newton a lot too, but the O line needs more help. Newton is definitely an option. I think in the first two rounds, O line and D line are like the biggest things for me right now. Like since let's look at the options because since we went guard in the first round, now we don't need to take like uh, Cooper here at fifty seven. Cooper wouldn't be a bad pick here in the second, but and also you could still take him because he took two guards. You still have two guards you can potentially fill. But I would like to see what is the D line looking at like. D line at this position, we have Chris Jenkins who's their 55 ranked player, who's not a bad option. He's an explosive, explosive guy. I just wish he rushed with more of a plan. Uh, he can hold his own at the point of attack. Same with Rook. Uh, I don't know how to say his name from Clemson. He's another guy I wouldn't mind here at 55. Um, probably Fatanu is too small for left tackle. I do think he would be better at guard, but I do think he can play uh, left tackle. But I do think he would be better guard. He... I wish he had a little more length to be like a top tier tackle at the next level. Sanders, yeah. Let me go back to all real quick. I feel like the Dolphins would be interested in Sanders. Let's see. Michael Penix, no. Payton Wilson, Junior Colson. I like them as players, but I just, I think with what they did in free agency, the Dolphins aren't going to add linebacker early. I think Sanders, Jenkins, BB would be an option if we didn't go for Tanu. He still is probably an option, but I don't know if we go back to our guards. And then, uh, Rook from Clemson is good. Paul, I don't know if you guys have heard of him from Ohio State. This guy's really undersized, small, but that guy is explosive. He has a wicked first step. Oh, also Corley, but I did Fatano and Corley in my other mock drafts, so I'm not going to do that, but yeah. There's some interesting names here. This guy from Yale is pretty interesting, the tackle, but I wouldn't go in that direction. There's still solid players here on the board. I, this is why I want to trade back, because there's still so many good players on the board at 55. It's actually insane. Yeah, Sanders does add a lot. Yeah, I I do think Fatanu would be fine at tackle, but um, I just think he would be an absolutely elite guard looking at his his skill set. But yeah, he would definitely transition to tackle down the line. Yeah, they don't have that. Like if you look at the Dolphins roster right now, they don't have high end guards that could start right now. They have they're fine at tackle, they're fine at center, uh, they're fine on you know. They, can, they need a third receiver, but they're fine with their top two guys, obviously. They are fine at tight end. They have a guy that can play and be a solid starter, but it wouldn't be against, you know, adding someone like Sanders. They do not have a defensive tackle next to Sealer. Like, at all. <laughs> like, they added Neville Gallimore, Benito Jones, uh, Jonathan Harris, but those are all, like, three, four, five guys, in my opinion, in the defensive tackle rotation. I really think... They're heavily considering taking a defense tackle within these first two rounds. So, and Chris Jenkins is interesting because he got good size. Like, he's got all the physical traits you can want uh, with a player. And I feel like the Dolphins would definitely be interested in his skill set. Coming from Michigan, good defense too. And Michigan would actually run ran a similar type scheme to what the Ravens ran. So I could see them just going Chris Jenkins. I think that's what I would probably do here. What do you guys think? Um, being in 12 more would make wide receiver three whole less important. True. I mean, yeah. I think the like Jenkins or Sanders here would be let's see what they have at the other positions, real quick. Receiver, top receiver is Jalen Polk, Malachi Corley. I like those players, but I don't know if they go there. I mean they could go Corley. I actually could see them do that, but I'm not gonna go. Do they still have Ryan Hayes? I do think yeah, Ryan Hayes. They also have uh, Keon Smith, who uh, I think will be the one of the swing tackles this year. He's actually was a solid backup backup tackle last year. Dun, 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 dun. Seems like you guys really want Sanders, at least from what I've seen. Fuck it, we'll go Sanders. <laughs> Michael Hall Jr. I wouldn't be against that. That guy's got some good length to him. He's just a little undersized and can get moved in the run game, but he has, I feel like he would be an early, like, pass rush specialist on the inside. Hmm. It's tough to say here. Get an ad on my own stream. <laughs> I'm gonna go Chris Jenkins for now. Your draft is complete. Restart. Oh my god. I'm a Dolphin, 24, two rounds, enter draft room. I'm gonna go back to here real quick. 
Hold on, I can't. Hello? Let's see what you guys said. Um, I think D line is smarter play, but Sanders is more fun. <laughs> I agree, and I like to have fun in the the mock drafts for sure. And I'm never gonna be mad if they take a player that I think is good, even if it's not the maybe the smartest choice position wise. Tyreek Waddle, John New Sanders. I think the only problem with having John New and Sanders on the field at the same time is. Neither are great blocking tight ends. Uh, I would like to have, if at least one of them was, I mean, they're all K. They're just not great. Yes, I'm a fan of Cam Smith. I think Cam Smith will be fine. I'm not too worried about it when it comes to Cam. Uh, I think last year he just didn't even get an opportunity. And I think that mainly had to do with the defensive coordinator not even giving him a chance. So uh, once he gets a chance to actually prove himself, and it, if he doesn't play well after he gets a chance, then uh, I would be worried. But I still um, I'm not too worried about Cam at all because he looked pretty pretty solid in call in the college film, obviously. I see DT rotation replace Wilkins this year. If the D tackle on the board doesn't fall right, yep, for sure. We have a great tight end coach, though. That's true, but like sometimes people just aren't great blockers. Like, I mean, John Smith, I don't think is gonna like improve greatly as a blocker. You know, this many years into his career, I do think. John, uh, Sanders out there shows effort and can do some good blocks out in space on defense tackles. Um, yeah. But I do like Sanders' film. I did a film break. He was one of the first players I did a film breakdown on. He's a seam threat, which I think that's kind of where they. Um, Janu is a little better off to catch, a little more like well condensed. He'll break more tackles, but Sanders has more explosive, like straight line speed to hit the seam. And then also he can make some good work uh, after the catch. Reek Waddle, HN, Janu, Brian Thomas. I've seen the Brian Thomas train. Who someone's doing that on Twitter where they're all over Brian Thomas. I like Brian Thomas. I have Brian Thomas as a top five receiver. If Brian Thomas is I don't even think he was available in that last mock draft I just did. But like if he was the best player um like available and he was like far and away the best, then I would be down. Because he has a really interesting skill set too. He definitely has the speed to fit within the scheme of the offense. He's a great vertical threat, and he's actually pretty strong at the catch point uh, in contested situations, which I think is like the most important thing. Because sometimes those players don't work out that are just straight vertical threats, and they're just speed, but they have to be able to win in contested uh, areas. Willingness is most important in age blocking, like Sanders and Jono. Yeah, but they're both kind of like age back types. As Cam Smith will show out, I agree. I wouldn't be upset with Thomas at 21. Yeah, either would I. I know some people are like, would be really mad, but you have to understand sometimes, I know you want an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman or whatever it is. Sometimes those players are just gone. Like I could see a world where Noon and Murphy are gone, the two first round defensive tackles, so they don't go D tackle first round. And then the top tier guards, like somehow, you know, fatanu has gone, maybe Barden's gone, and then they don't want to go JPJ as a center to switch them to guard, so they end up just going receiver instead. It all depends on their board. Like the board's everything. But if we sign OBJ, oh yeah, if they sign OBJ, I don't see them going receiver in the first round. But, which also, that's a sign they are probably thinking of not going receiver in the first round if they're already making offers to him. But if he doesn't sign, then uh, OBJ becomes an option. They might just wait till after the draft too, because I can see where uh, Odell trying not to sign until the draft anyways. I want to see the Dolphins use everyone instead of trying to force feed to Hill and Waddle. Like, yeah. I want more options on the field for sure. That's why I like adding Johnny Smith just as like a guy you can get the guy into his hand, the ball into his hands, and he's so good after the catch. I think that adds so much value. It's just, it would be interesting because the Dolphins weren't great, haven't been great in 12 personnel. It's not been something they've been strong suited in. So maybe yeah, bringing in Sanders with John U would make them a little bit stronger in that area. But they've always been better in like either 11 or 21. Are going to have a good draft? I'm sure of it. I hope so. There's been some drafts where I was like, that was an insane, amazing draft, and there was some where I, it wasn't as strong, in my opinion. But it would be hard not to address O-line or D-line around one. Yeah, it, I agree. I've, I've looked at these boards. It's like someone's going to fall at that position that's going to be really strong. I would try to drop down to 33, get most value. I mean, yeah, it just depends who is offering to get up, because 
there's definitely some players out there that would uh be fun. But I could see like like I was saying, like Amarius Mims, if he drops, I could see teams being really interested in a player like him that need tackle trying to trade up from just like a few spots back. So that would be uh, how do you think? Devondre Sweat. Um Devondre Sweat's a beast. I wouldn't take him until the second round though. Uh just like a big one nose tackle type one tech nose tackle type player. Really solid versus the run. Can create some push in the pocket as a pass rusher with you know his strength and length, but that'd be a hard guy to move. And I could see the Dolphins uh I didn't see his name there, so I'm assuming he was gone. But yeah, I would not be against Tavondre Sweat at all. There's there's a lot of guys to like. I'm, I'm I have a list up here of interior defenders. Oh, Braden, uh, Bra- how do you say his last? Is it Fisk or Fisky from Florida State? He would be interesting. I just don't think he's going to be there at 55. And I think there will be better options at 21. So that would be like a trade back option type of player, in my opinion, because he's really like explosive. His first step is absolutely insane. And uh, he's a pretty smart football player as well. He really recognized stuff super fast. Uh, and run defense wise, I would like to see him maybe hold up a little better at the point of attack when he's like, you know, trying to stack and shed, but he can definitely create some disruptions there too. Thoughts on Christian Haynes. Okay. Yeah. If, the, if we go D line in the first round, cause I, I just, I got Christian Haynes film the other day and I'm probably making a video on him soon. I think Christian Haynes would be a home run pick in the second round. So they don't go O line in the first, say they go like D line, take Murphy or something, or they go even receiver, whatever it is. If they wanted to go, then O line get guard in the second. I think Christian Haynes, you get possibly get him at fifty five. Hopefully, he's not gone. And then because he's really athletic, uh, does a lot of things really well in pass protection. I think you know he's a little undersized, but he plays with a good anchor and stuff too. So I really like watching his film. Really would be a big fan of him in the second round. I'm praying that Chiefs don't get Xavier Worthy. They would be insane with Worthy. They would. So with the Dolphins, if the Dolphins took Worthy. I don't think that would be their best pick, but I think it would be a lot of fun for sure. <laughs> oh, we get another another look at your boy Ryder. AFC East news recap and highlights. Nice. Ooh, Haynes versus. I need to spend. I just watched Haynes a lot recently, so um, I'm really watching the guard. I think I'm gonna lean Haynes for now, but I'm gonna do like a deep dive on uh beep soon, so. That I'll I'll give a real answer on that down the line, but I think I'd probably lean Haynes specifically because I think he's a great scheme fit for the Dolphins. Like athlete, his athletic uh, ability, I think he just fits perfectly into Miami. Um, I don't think the my I don't think the Dolphins will trade up for Joe. I'll, I I just don't see it happening. I don't know if they would trade up. I just don't think they have the capital to trade up for anyone. I think the only way they trade up is maybe if they fell in love with a player like Brock Bowers and he fell farther than they expected to like 15 and then they traded up. But I just, I don't think they would trade up farther than that. Mahogany from Boston College. I'm a fan of Mahogany as well. I did a video on him. That guy's ability to pick up like twists and stunts is so impressive to me. Like he really is a smart football player. Uh, anchors pretty well. Uh, understands how to use his hands. So yeah, I'm a fan of Mahogany as like a day two guy. I just think he's more of like a late round two, early round three player from what I saw. So maybe if they traded back in the second, I would be a fan. I mean, if they took him at 55, I wouldn't be mad. But I also think you could take him in a possible trade back situation. But yeah, he's probably, he's definitely a day two guy for sure. It's just weird with this draft. The Dolphins just don't have a third and fourth round pick. And this draft is so strong in the third and fourth round. That's why it's, uh, it would be pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, 55 would be a little too high for Mahogany, in my opinion, but in a trade back, late second, early third, I I would take him for sure. Commanders draft a QB, it will, things fall in our favor. Yeah, I think the Commanders are going to draft a QB. I think QBs are going to, I think four QBs are going to go in the top five, so it should be, should be fine there. Thoughts on the NFL banning hip tackling? Like, bro, as someone who played defensive back, I don't know how you're supposed to tackle certain, like, bigger players in certain situations other than trying to hit, like, you're not trying to hurt someone. There's certain times where it's, like, pretty obvious, like a blatant hip tackle where they didn't need to, but a lot of the ones they showed, it's like, how else are you supposed to tackle them? You want them to just carry them forward for extra yards? 
I think it's pretty ridiculous. The defense already has it pretty hard as it is, but I get it's going for, for player safety. In my opinion, the offense was in 21 personnel because we had a weak tight end room. If they draft Sanders or Bowers, but we're going to come out in 21, 12, and 22 personnel equally. It makes us look like we're going to run one safety. Definitely a possibility. Like, I wouldn't be mad. It's just, for some reason, even when they were in 12, like, they didn't run as well in 12 personnel. Uh, which is weird. Like, their yard per average, I'm pretty sure, unless I'm remembering incorrectly, but pretty sure their yards per carry was a lot higher in, like, 11 and 21 and stuff like that. So, it definitely could change things by bringing in better players. Obviously, that would definitely help. But it does seem like the scheme does fit better at times when they had less tight ends on the field, which is interesting. Spamming throws to the tight end the flat to bait hip drop tackles. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if you see, uh, you know, people doing that. I'm that there's plenty of injuries. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it definitely will help people stay healthier. There, like I remember, I had Mark Andrews in fantasy, and he went out for the rest of the year with the hip drop tackle. So it definitely hurt me there. Definitely, but I think there will be a lot of cases where it will be a pretty weak call, and there will be cases where I'll be like. Oh yeah, I understand why they called that one. That's they can definitely be dangerous, but yeah, some hip drop tackles for sure. That's why it should be more of a case by case basis. But I get they have to make these rules. Like there will be somewhere like it's not even really a hip drop tackle. Like they drop their hips, but it's not over their legs. Then it shouldn't be called for sure. Texas Jones, uh, then Rook, my first round and second round. I think that'd be pretty fun. I think you can play. Uh, Johnson, you can play JBJ at center or guard, and he'd be fine. That's why I'm I'm not still against taking JBJ even after signing Aaron Brewer or Aaron Brewer, however you say his name. Uh, but yeah, and then I like uh, Brook a lot. He's interesting. Um, I think he's pretty you know high floor. If he can just develop like some more technical skills, like as a pass rusher, because he's got some like quick twitch to his game, he can. Uh, hold his own at the point of attack pretty well i definitely like his skill set right now and i feel like he can get even better once he clearly like understands like it has like a plan and with his repertoire and stuff like that <laughs> javon to breaking news tackling van titty <laughs> i mean kind of some of those plays i feel like it was just a regular tackle and then some of them are like clearly kind of messed up Tackling summer is not picking them and slamming them. You have to drag them down. Yeah. The holding penalty is reduced to five yards. It's the biggest negative impact call. Yeah, what it was it's what, fifteen automatic first? That's yeah, it's a little little steep in my opinion, but I get it. You know, they're trying they're going for player safety, which is not always a bad thing, but sometimes it can, you know, make the game a little less enjoyable to watch. But let's see. Let's go back into the mock draft simulator. So F and boom. Hopefully trying to look at the screen when it actually catches up. <laughs> Make sure it all looks good. Let's see. Weaver punching the air right now. <laughs> um let's see what this mock ends up looking like. We're gonna hit start. Oh, I did not turn fast on, so it's going slow. <laughs> okay, as this goes slowly, we can see. Nate Wiggins, Latham, Dejean, Mims, Urse, Luanga. I'm not doing trades because these trades are so unrealistic. Wow, how is Joe Alt here at 21? <laughs> uh, well, someone asked, should the Dolphins trade up for Joe Alt? Here it is. I don't think I can take Joe Alt. How, bro? Like, there's no way. What the heck? So they had all these players go. All those players could go. Wow. That's that would be absolutely insane. I just don't see that happening. Um, I mean, if the draft fell like the, I'm a, I'm gonna ignore all. I don't think all is gonna be there. So I'm trying to be realistic with this. Fatano's here again, but we just took Fatano. Yes, Fatano would be my go-to option. I also don't think Fatano is gonna be there. If the board falls like this, you have Murphy, Jackson Power Johnson, you have Noon as well. I think I'm gonna try to go I think I'm gonna go detackle this time just to mix things up and then see what happens with O line at the next the next sort of look. 
Chop Robinson's still there. I can't believe is this his actual name? How do you pronounce that? Well, I knew his name wasn't actually Chop, but I didn't know what his actual name was. Barton and Darius Robinson, I also think will be options. Let's see, nothing really else. Scrolling down. Sometimes these these sites have people rank pretty poorly in my opinion, but we're gonna go Byron Murphy this time. I think he fits in. Basically just replaces Christian Wilkins. Has some similarities to him. Quick twitch. Very explosive, disruptive player in the backfield, and I would be not to be mad if he was to pick at 21. Now let's watch it slowly go to 55. <laughs> yeah, I, Joe Holt's not going to be there at 21. Just took Fatanu. I've taken Fatanu in almost every mock. He's there, so we're just not going to take him this time. But yeah, I would, I would go Fatanu a lot of times. And here we go, five trade offers. What are they offering me? What the fuck? They want to give me a fifth this year and then a second. I could get out of here, bro. Yeah, Byron Murphy would be a great Wilkins replacement. They have a lot of similarities. I mean, you get a guy that's on a much cheaper contract and you filled a lot of other needs at the same time. So definitely would not be mad if Murphy was to pick. If that's the real board I'm trading down. That's true. Someone would probably trade up for Joe All and give you some <laughs> good amount of picks, but I just don't see <laughs> that happening. That would be... I don't think we need to draft an 11 first round. I don't think they need... I I think they definitely could, and there's a high chance they will, but I don't think they need to necessarily. There's definitely other positions they could go. I think with how they did free agency, there's a lot of uh, different ways that uh, the board can fall now that they can go in different directions with D-line, O-line, potentially receiver, potentially edge, if that's where the better players end up happening. Um, Should we go... Double Texas here. This time goes Sanders. So top, I actually would consider Newbin here. I like Tyler Newbin. I do think the Dolphins are going to run three safety sets. I think Newbin's a pretty good cover guy on the back end. Would be really, I think, nice. And Anthony Weaver's scheme has some good ball skills. I actually think if Newbin was here, I think he's the top safety in this draft class. And I do think the Dolphins are definitely considering safety at some point. Because they took Poyer on a one-year deal. They have two starters, so it's not like a necessity to take a safety. But if Newbin was here at 55, I think it's in consideration. Cooper, Wilson, is the Dolphins, I think, you know, with signing um, Jordan Brooks and bringing in Anthony Walker, I don't think linebackers is big of a need anymore. But those are two good players, and I wouldn't be mad, but I just don't think this direction they go. TJ Tampa, if they went corner, I wouldn't be mad at Tampa, but I don't think they're going to go corner. Or do we go hit Haynes? Here he is. Haynes is here at 62. People I would consider here. So we already have D-Tackle. We don't need Jenkins or, you know, Rook. I think people I'm considering, Newbin, Sanders, uh, and Haynes would be my three guys after going M Murphy in the first. If you went Murphy in the first, that would be where I, where I would go. Is linebacker out of the question? I don't think it's out of the question. I just don't think it's the most valuable position to go earlier in the draft. Plus, I think this is a weaker linebacker class. Plus, they just signed guys where... I think they have bigger positions of need. Unless they're like the linebacker was like clear best player available, which I don't think they are in this scenario. Yeah, I mean if Joel if Joel actually falls to twenty one, you you draft him for sure. And honestly, you just tell it, hey, Armstead, retire. <laughs> and honestly, I mean even if he didn't retire, all would definitely play. Let's be honest. Injuries are likely to happen, and we would see all it for sure. If we got all I wouldn't, yeah, I mean, it would be a no-brainer. That's Obviously, that's where I would have gone if that's how it played out, but I don't think that's actually going to play out. And think of that, like, that had the all would definitely go, so it would be another name to choose from. There's just going to be a lot of good options at 21. That's why I'm definitely about trading uh, back. I think we're going to go... I'm trying to see different combinations here, different ways this draft play out. Say they get Murphy. Now your D-tackle room is pretty good because you have depth. You have a good starter and sealer. And now you have a potential new stud with Murphy. So your D-tackle room would then be fine. Then what do you need? You can still add to the tight end room and upgrade it and get even better. But you really do need starting guards. If you don't draft a guard here, then you are ro rolling into the season with either Wynn, Driscoll, Eichenberg, Jones, two of those four starting. I think Haynes. We're going to have fun here, I think. We're going to have fun and go Sanders. Double Texas. 
but I think they could easily go Haynes because I think he'd be a really a uh, nice pick. Restart. Go back. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I probably would have gone Haynes there in the actual in the actual draft, but I wanted to mix it up. I know people wanted Sanders. Some people wanted Sanders the last one, having some fun. But I do think if that's how the draft plays out and they go D tackle in the first. I actually think there's a very real possibility Sanders would be gone by 55 because I think Sanders is the second best tight end. If you look at last year's draft, a lot of tight ends went in like the early second round range before 55. Like I know like that's sort of like Laporta went, uh, Michael Mayer, a lot of them went in that range. Even guys went higher than, like some guys went in the second that I didn't even expect, like Luke Schoonmaker and uh, the guy that went to the Jaguars. He was from Penn State. I can't remember his name, but yeah, I think... Uh, I would probably really realistically go Haynes. And I think that would be a great draft. Just building through the trenches. And Haynes is a definitely NFL quality starting guard, in my opinion. Not like a first round player, but I feel like he would be pretty solid. I think offensive line should go first because our line right now isn't great. We also don't know who we are right guard. Yeah, it just depends. Like, if Barton's the best O line available at 21, like, I'm not going to be mad if that's the pick. But I also wouldn't be mad if they went Murphy because I think Murphy's a better prospect than Barton. But Barton would be a great pick because he can play any position across the offensive line and has experience doing all that. I would, I would say a line there, like a line I would be happy with. I doubt they're all gone by 21. Yeah, I doubt it too. There's four quarterbacks that have to go. There's going to be at least four receivers that go, plus Bowers, um, plus probably you know some defensive players, some corners. There would definitely be a line available at at 21 that wouldn't be bad to pick up for sure. How would you rate the Dolphins draft last year? I mean, it's kind of tough to rate these last two drafts because they didn't really have any picks. Um, are you saying how would I rate them now or how would I have rated them when they actually happened before I seen the players play? Because I was a big fan of the HN pick. Obviously, I was like rooting for that to happen. If you saw a pre-draft, that's like, or like following the channel, you knew I wanted HN. And I love HN's film. It was like the perfect scheme fit. That was just like, the ideal thing to happen. I was also a big fan of Cam Smith's film, but I think after that, it's like you're picking late round guys. I didn't watch Ryan Hayes play um, pre-draft, and I late they took what it was Elijah Higgins who didn't even make the team, and I was like, oh, he's an interest. He was an intriguing guy to take a uh, like wide receiver transition to tight end. Maybe it worked out, but they ended up having taken Julian Hill. But it was an okay draft. But you got an absolute stud at running back, and I think Cam Smith's gonna work out at corner in my opinion. So. It's a. Uh, it's so hard to rank a rate a draft like on a scale that's only had four picks. So they didn't even have a first rounder. I wish we had a third to to snag a falling wide receiver. I agree, because I think this draft class is so good. There's so many good receivers. There's gonna be stud receivers in the third round. Even in the fourth round, there will be guys that I think could start. That's why I'm all for trading back. I think we might draft a tight end with a pick twenty one. Yeah, only if Bowers is there. Yeah, I agree. If they wanted to, like, I wouldn't take any other tight end at 21. If they traded back, like, a lot, like, say they traded back, like, into the early second round and took Sanders, I'd be fine with that. Still, I wouldn't do it, but I would not take Sanders at 21. I would be a little disappointed if that was the case. But I would be like, okay, I like him as a player, but that's a reach, in my opinion. I don't really grade picks after the fourth round. Yeah, I think... I definitely, it just depends, like, who's available. Like, if there's a players available, like, and they took someone that was like, no, that's a horrible pick over this other player, then I think you can, you know, have a reaction to the pick. But if it's just like, oh, there's nothing really standing out to me and they took, then I'm not going to be too mad with picks. <laughs> Read them now. How do you feel about Ryan Hayes? Ryan Hayes looked good in the preseason. Uh, I actually liked, I think Butch Bear did really good with the offensive line because a lot of the offensive line that, you know, played throughout this last year a lot of them were not good players previously at least like like lester cotton was horrible before barry showed up and then he ended up starting some games and while he wasn't good he wasn't as horrible as he looked so like i feel like everyone improved and looked better than i expected like you know even the starters like austin jackson isaiah Wynn, eichenberg even had some good performances throughout the year which is crazy because he was absolutely terrible before this previous year um and then other guys you know and I also think the scheme helps out a lot as well and how quickly Tua gets rid of the ball. Sanders clear tight end two this year, probably. 
And then for me, I would say tight end three is uh, Ben Sennett for Kansas State. I don't. After that, the tight end class has some guys like Theo Johnson, Penn State. Um, and then there's some there's some other intriguing players, but it's not super strong. After Bowers, there's you know. Why do you think Vic Van Jose Kansas is not ready, but Eli Apple's is man, Eli Apple Mag is taking advantage of every I I don't know, man. It's hard to get in the mind of Vic Vangio. <laughs> like I guess he just felt that Eli Apple understood the scheme more and where to be. And Cam Smith I'm guessing Vic Vangio never wanted Cam Smith to begin with, if I had to guess. So then he was just like, I'm not playing him. I like Sinnott. Yes. If we had a third or fourth rounder and we took Sinnott in the third or fourth, I'd be so happy. He's one of my favorite players to watch in this draft class. There's a lot of players I like, really, really like to watch. Um, also, oh, I wish the Dolphins had a, also like a third or a fourth for some safeties. Cause like if they got like uh, the guy from Texas test, uh, Dadrian Taylor Demerson to play safety in like the third, oh, I'd be so happy. Or like Cole Bishop. Those players have some nice coverage skills, can play single high on the back. Like Dadrian Taylor Demerson can play some single high ball skills. Those would be. That's I just feel like there's so much value to be had in the third round. The Dolphins don't have it. That's why I'm all for trading back for sure. It'd be so exciting. That'd be absolutely amazing. The more I learn about the class, the more I want to trade back from 55. Yeah, also trading back from 55 is definitely a possibility. It's just when you trade back from 55, you're probably not going to pick up a third unless you trade back a lot. Like an extra third, I'm saying. And then uh, you might be able to pick up a fourth depending on how desperate a team is for a player. Yeah, the draft is... I'm just excited. I think when I start doing future streams, I'll do more mock drafts, maybe full mock drafts, maybe have some things planned out, pull up clips on stream too once I can get that ready. And then I think I'm going to have like... Uh, just like go strictly by position. Like rank my top 10, rank some sleepers. I'll have like one stream where I just talk about the guards, one stream where I just talk about the defensive tackles. Guys that fit within the Dolphins scheme, and uh, it should be pretty fun. Did Hunt improve Eichenberg and Jackson's play grades? Wait, did Hunt player grades? Um, what do you mean? Just like when he was in, did they play better? I uh, no, I think they played fine with. It. I I don't think it really impacted that overall. Devondre Sweat, yes, Devondre Sweat would be a pretty good pick in the second round. I think absolutely. Like, say they went. If they got Fatanu at 21 and then Sweat at 55, you absolutely filled your needs and you would be fine. How would you rate Chris Greer A to F? Probably a B. I think overall he does a good job. Sometimes I don't agree with him, but for the most part, he does a pretty good job, I think, building the roster. You know what it was? I actually think Eichenberg specifically played better without Hunt. Because he's a better at right guard and Hunt played right guard. Like when Eichenberg had to play at center or left guard, he just didn't look as strong. But right guard, it was by far his best performances. So if Eichenberg has to play, I would prefer he plays at right guard. Um, what do you guys? Safety from Oregon State. I have not watched him yet. I will get around. That's why I haven't been doing these mocks to like the seventh round. Because once you get to like the seventh, I. I can't. I haven't watched like 300 prospects yet. I've seen a little bit of some of those later guys. Some of them I've definitely watched film on. But it's like once I get to those rounds, it's like, well, I've only really seen like two of these guys play, so I can't give you like a real, real uh, opinion on that. When I get bored, I shoot mock drop on the Dolphins and post them on my channel. I mean, hey, mock drops are fun. It definitely uh, can be uh, help you fill the time. I wasn't a fan of, but it worked out better than I thought. Yeah, the Chubb trade, I think when I said in the original video, I was like, I like Chubb. I think he's a good player. Um, would I have made the trade for a first rounder? No, I still wouldn't. I still wouldn't today have made the trade for the first rounder, but I wasn't mad about it because I do think Chubb was a good player. I probably would have done it for like a second. And But overall, I mean, the trade, he's played the first year they traded for him. It definitely wasn't worth it. This past year, he was quite good before the injury. So I wasn't still not, I'm still not mad about the trade or anything. It's definitely worked out, and he's uh, played really, really good last year. Oh yeah, Brandon Peely, I forgot. Yeah, he's he, he'll fight for a roster spot this season. Uh, he, I think he made the initial roster and then ended up getting cut, but was on the practice squad. But yeah, he'll he'll be fighting, especially if the Dolphins don't draft a defensive tackle early. 
he could even fight for playing time because the defensive tackle room after Sealer is not too strong right now. Anyone I would trade up for? Only really, the only one I would really trade up for is Bowers, personally. Because, like, I feel like the only other positions you trade up for is, like, O-line or receiver, but, like, the O-line and receiving class is so strong, you don't need to trade up to get one of those guys. I feel like if you really wanted an offensive lineman, there's still going to be a good, uh, potentially multiple good ones still at 21. So I wouldn't try to trade up, especially with their draft capital. If they had a lot of draft capital, yeah, I'm fine trading up for your guy, but with the capital, I'm not doing it. What do you think the chances of the Dolphins are going to get worthy? <laughs> I'm not going to put anything past Mike McDaniel trying to get that. I'm going to say like 5%. Because I think it's a possibility. I don't think it's going to happen. But I do think Mike McDaniel is crazy enough, depending on the board, how it falls, and be like, fuck it, we're, going, we're, getting, we're getting another speedster. How are they going to stop us? And if anything, it's going to be fun. Nah, I mean, I don't really feed in too much. Like, when it comes to, like, prospects like that and they get, like, start really, like, falling down people's boards or even rising up crazy, I try not to feed into that too much because, like, to me, it's, like, what has changed since then, you know? Like, the film is still the film, all the exact same thing. Unless the health is, like, crazy detrimental, I'm not too worried about it. Like, I was all for the Jalen Phillips pick, and Jalen Phillips had, like, medically retired a few years previously to that, so... And he's worked out pretty fun. Um, like, because he had some like head injuries a lot in college. That's true. Don't need a lot of everyone screaming open instantly. That's true. I mean, if they went worthy, it would be a definitely, I mean, it already is one of the most exciting offenses to watch, and it would be insanely exciting to watch. And I don't think it'd be the worst pick because he could play inside, outside. How do you stop all three of them on the field at the same time? It'd be really insane. Plus, when you they rotate them out a lot at the same time, so when you do get that rotation, you can still have Worthy on the field in the back of rotation when you only have like two wide receivers on the field. Like say you're in twenty one or twelve personnel, so still keeping that speed on the field at all times would be insane. What do you think about Brendan Rice in later rounds? In the later rounds, I'm fine with it, but I've seen him going in like the third rounds, and I'm not a I don't I don't like Brendan Brendan Rice that much. To go, it's like a day two guy. If you got him in like the fifth or a sixth, I think that's fine. But I'm, I don't think I like guys who are a little more separators, and I don't think he's a very good route runner. So, but if you got him in the later rounds, I think there's some stuff there to work with. There's definitely a lot of receivers in this class that I like. I let me look at. I'm gonna scroll through some receivers real quick. Um, just talk about some receivers. I mean, obviously the top three guys are out of the question. Oh, I know people have been talking about Mitchell, the other Texas receiver for the Dolphins. Personally, I wouldn't go in that direction. Uh, I There's a lot of things to like with him, like his movement skills, his route running is really good for a guy of his size, has some really good body control. But there's just times he takes routes off, like he can get a little lazy. Like if he doesn't think his route's going to get open just based on the coverage, he just kind of gives up, and I'm not, I don't like that. I would like to see a little more effort. Uh, hold on, let me read this chat. Uh, writer, as much film as you watch, what percentage of the better play from the O-line simply come from Tua quick release? He's getting, well, getting a lot of credit for it. Yes. I think, honestly, a lot. Percent, like, I'm trying to think percentage-wise. I think a lot of it is coming from, one, to his quick release, but two, the scheme. Like, especially in pass protection. I think you got to give credit to the O-line for their improvement in the running game. Like, all of them. Like, they all improved a lot as at run blockers. But I think a lot of, you know, to his quick release, plus... With how much they slide and use play action, if you really look at it, the guards and the tackles even are not getting a lot of true one-on-one opportunities in pass protection. So that kind of helps their film look a lot cleaner and get graded better. So I think that definitely plays into it. That's why I think O-line might not be as important or not, I mean, not as like important to the Dolphins as some of the fans think. Like they could still easily go O-line because... It's a huge need still for the team, but I think they can get away with it with what they have right now if they didn't want to go in that direction. So that's that's a big thing. That's a good question, Scotty. My personal uh, Mike McDaniel needs to be a head coach. He tries to be the player's friends and he needs to see him be the head coach without trying to be the player's friends. Um, yeah, I get what you're trying to say, but to me, Mike McDaniel's just being himself. That's what it is. Any punter prospects? 
I'll be honest, I do not know. Like, I feel like if I, I mean, there probably are plenty of prospects. I have not watched them. I don't know how to, like, I don't know how to watch film or grade a punter, but I guess if they kick it farther. And I think they extend our punter. People were bad about it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not that big a deal, but yeah, I would like to see them. Have you watched Jermaine Byrne? Character concerns could have fall super far. Yeah, Jermaine Byrne does have some, like, character concerns. His film is actually pretty good. Like, he's got some good stuff here. Let me, where do they have him ranked on this list that I'm on? They have him ranked 52. Yeah, and like he's six foot 194. He's got some nice like quickness to his game. You can tell he's a separator, understands like how to run his routes, can do some stuff inside outside. He's the kind of wide receiver where like his skill set just translates really well to the next level. But that character concerns like I don't know. Didn't he like hit some like female after a game like that was coming out of the field or something? Or yeah, some girl I can't remember. But yeah, it seemed pretty, pretty weird. But I do think he has some good film. Players like, oh, like Roman Wilson, Ricky Purcell, uh, Purcell from Florida. Those would be interesting guys in the second round if they wanted to go receiver. They both good athletes, body control. Wilson's, you know, a little smaller and compact. Or I guess he's only like, they have Roman Wilson listed as six foot. He does not look six foot on film, but. Persaul is like a little more like body control freaky type athlete, while Wilson is a pretty good deep threat. What do you think? It, yeah, his pre, the character stuff seems really weird, so I personally wouldn't go for it. I mean, unless he fell super far, but I I don't think he's going to fall that far in the draft because he seems like he's going to go in that range where the Dolphins don't have a draft pick, if I had to guess. Sorry, I keep forgetting. Okay, where's this question? What do you think is more important than Robinson? A speedster or a runner after the catch? I think now, run after the catch. And specifically, like, looking at the offense, like, like they have the speed. They definitely have the speed. They have speed all across the offense. And all those guys can also get after the catch. But I'm thinking run after the catch, and specifically guys like what they added with Johnny Smith. Guys who can obviously break tackles, make people miss. They have, but they have that contact balance, that core strength. They run people over. They carry people for extra yards. I think they need that with a tight end, and I still think they need a little more of that from the receiver position. That's kind of what they were thinking of when they got like someone like Ezukanma. Ezukanma is really good after the catch, breaking tackles. Like if you watch his college film, he's got some insane <laughs> ability to like break some tackles. But yeah, how do you feel about Cedric? Yeah, from Georgia. Um, I've watched a little bit of him. I remember thinking he was like pretty technically sound, but to me, he's like a third to fourth round player, probably like a fourth round player. And the Dolphins don't have a fourth round pick. Oh, Anaya Smith, yes. I've watched a lot of Anaya Smith over the years. He, because I watched a lot of HN last year, I've been watching Anaya Smith for years. They're both out of Texas A&M. Anaya Smith has experience playing, like, slot and running back. I think he'd be an intriguing guy. If you got him in, like, the fifth, like I say, because the Dolphins have first, second, fifth, a couple six or whatever, maybe seven. I can't remember which ones they have late. But, yeah, the Dolphins bet with him. I do think he would be super intriguing to me in, like, the, the later rounds like that. If you get him on day three, because... He's played running back for the for AM. He played slot receiver. He's got some good shiftiness. He can even run some decent routes, get out there. He's like a gadget type player. I feel like he'd be you get that guy on a day three, and that's a super intriguing like offensive weapon for McDaniel to work with. Say so you build through the the trenches day one and day two, and then you end up with an Anaya Smith. I think that'd be a pretty like intriguing add on the later days. This receiver class is really good. Like, I like Jalen Polk from Washington. I think Xavier Leggett would be a perfect scheme fit for the offense. McMillan, another receiver from Washington. That guy is good. He kind of gives me similar play style to like what Nakua does for the Rams. I feel like that would be a good scheme fit. Worthy. Um, Javon Baker, another stud. Body control on the outside. Makes plays on a vertical plane really well. He can return to? Yeah, true. Uh, that would be an interesting thing. Maybe he could take over for uh, Berrios. Yeah, there's a lot of receivers like like Corley would be a perfect scheme fit. Jacob Cowing, another like slot type of gadget guy. You get the ball in his hands. He's king, but he can also create separation. He's a little smaller guy. I think he goes in like the An- Anaya Smith range as well. Same with Malik Washington. He's another. I really like Malik Washington. That guy's like he's great off the catch. Accelerates. Can get open. Understands where to find soft spots versus zone. His body control and ability to like. He has some insane explosiveness to go up and catch the ball. I love when a smaller receiver can also make plays at the catch point. Like, so usually that's where they struggle. 
But if you see a small receiver that's like your typical guy that's quick, creates separation, gets open, but is also strong at the catch point, um, cowing is so good. Yep, big fan. Thrash, uh, the Louisville guy. Yeah, he is intriguing too. He runs some good routes. Uh, where do they have him listed on this? They have him listed at 83, so like a third round guy. Yeah, that's He seems like a guy that's going to go in that range. The Dolphins don't have a pick in for sure. Um, but yeah, he's like a, what do they have him? 6'1", 185, yeah. He understands like how to create separation. He is pretty inf- efficient. Well, he'll, he'll get uh, in and out of his breaks, attack, manipulate. He's pretty fun. This receiver class is ridiculous. That's why I wish the Dolphins had like a third or fourth round pick. Because I think that you can go trenches early and then get like a receiver uh, in that range. And that could still be like your third guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Malik would be elite if you were in a small in the wide receiver room. But like say if... If the Washington's there in the fifth, I feel like you just take him because he's an absolute stud and it doesn't matter that you're small there because uh, he's just a beast. And while I would like to get bigger, I'd rather just take a good player in a good spot of the draft. What do you think about, yeah, uh, the Clemson D tackle? I still don't know how to pronounce his name. I still have to look that up. But I do like him as a second round option. He is a uh, quick twitched. Um, I've watched this film recently. I've watched so many guys recently. I'm trying to keep track of who was who in my head. But yeah, he's quick twitched and hold his own at the point of attack. I think he just has, um, would like to see him have a little more of a plan as a pass rusher. And if he does that, then he'll absolutely take off and be a stud in the NFL. Poker. Yeah, that's a, from Holy Cross. I've only seen his highlights. I haven't watched his film because I don't have film on Holy Cross. So it's tough to say, but that guy's like a really good athlete and has like really good body control from what I've seen. He would be an intriguing late guy. The, the wide receiver has absolutely ridiculous. I'm just looking at this list and I'm scrolling down and seeing absolute stud after stud. It's insane. Yeah. Luke McCaffrey. Casey Washington's a sleeper from Illinois. I'm going to do a video on him soon. That guy is good. Yeah, there's so many guys in this draft class. What about the Holy Cross kid? Um, Just talked about him, but I don't have film on him, so I can't. If I've only seen highlights, I'm not going to try to like talk and pretend like I know too much about the receiver because or about the player. But it's tough to just judge a player strictly off highlights. Those can be misleading. So without the film, it'll be a little difficult. Who do you think better, JPJ or Graham Barton? Hmm. I think that is tough to say, actually. I think Jackson Powers Johnson's the better center. But if you want a guard, I would go Barton. I think Barton, and he can also play tackle if needed. Plus, Barton has played center at, I think, certain points in his career. So he would be, like, I think Barton is just, like, one of the safest options in this draft class. Really strong anchor and pass protection. I saw him anchoring versus Jared Verse from Florida State. He was going to go very high in this draft class. And he's doing that with, like, shorter arms. That guy's legit. That guy is absolutely legit. I think Xavier Legia is so overrated after the catch. I've watched his film. He's like, I would like to see him be, he's he's strong after the catch and he's fast after the catch. I'd like to see him be a little more elusive after the catch, which is why I think, you know, Corley is more of the scheme fit for the Dolphins because he is really, really good after the catch. That guy is absolutely ridiculous. If you could go back and do it over, who would you draft, Justin Herbert or Tua? Asking the tough questions, I see. <laughs> I think that it just depends on who your coach is. Like, if your coach is McDaniel, I'm probably taking Tua. But if you have, like, a, you know, a coach who's running more of, like, a air it out, air raid type thing, probably go Herbert. I think both players are really good, in my opinion. I feel like, you know, a lot of... Some people in the fan base or even the Charger fan base try to tear down the other player to, you know, build up theirs, but I think both players are pretty good. It just depends. Depends on scheme fit at times. And, you know, players around you are important, obviously, because as we saw through the years, you know, Herbert had a strong cast early in his career and put up really good numbers. Tua did not, and then it kind of flipped. Herbert started losing some of his guys to injuries. You guys around him weren't as good. Then Tua got some good players around him, and then he started playing really well. So I think situation is super important for a lot of these players. That's why a lot of players don't work out. They just don't end up in the right situation. 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think, uh, I think we uh, kind of hit everything that I wanted to talk about. I think I, I don't remember. Has anything else happened in the Dolphins news? That we, I haven't talked about yet. I can't remember. I think I hit it all in the last stream. At least all the guys they added. Talked a lot about the draft. Yeah, hindsight is always twenty twenty. See, I, I actually had Burrow first. I liked Burrow a lot. and I mean, Burrow's obviously was good. That whole QB... I was big on Jordan Love as well. I actually really liked that QB class. I wasn't big on Hertz. Um, out of the, the five that have worked out at least a little bit for their teams. But I really liked all the other guys. I... I was super high on Jordan Love, at least to go higher than where he went. Um, Herbert, I liked Herbert. I liked Tua a lot. Thought Burrow was really good. So yeah, that class and and the class has looked really good. But McDaniel said he's remaining as play caller. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that today. Um, yeah, I'm surprised he even said that. He like thought pretty long and hard about it, that he was going to turn uh, go off of it. Maybe he thought there's just a lot of, uh, um, he's heard the noise. Personally, I don't think he should uh, like change as play caller, at least not yet, unless it's like becomes too much for him. There are things he can improve at, but for the most part, like he has still led them to be the number one offense. I know there's things situational. He just needs to work on certain situational uh, things, specifically down on the goal line or third and fourth and short. Um, yeah, I talked about, uh, Jason, I, Rook, multiple times, uh, let me, <laughs> okay, is it, someone's gotta tell me how to pronounce the name, I gotta look it up, I'm looking up after this video, cause I, the Clemson D tackle, but yeah, I like him, as a second round guy, um, yeah, really twitched up, do you think the starting D line is right now, I'm obviously Sealer, and then probably Benito Jones, and then after that you have, like, Gallimore and... The other guys they signed and potentially they brought back to Sean Hand. I don't know. I think that's why they add D tackle with one of their first two picks because they need a starter. They don't have one. Yeah, I, I said I don't think McDaniel will give it up unless like something they they really start to struggle. Then I could see him giving it up. He's obviously an elite play designer, and for the most part, does a good job. It's just situational. He strikes me as a star. Yeah, I can see that for sure. Uh, he definitely has a lot of a really good like athletic and physical skill set. Just as I I think I said about him, um, it's just a pass rush plan. I feel like sometimes he goes without a plan. If he can figure out, there, and that's something you can work on at least. Like if you come with more of a plan as a pass rusher uh, with your moves, combining things together. So it's just like a technical thing with him. If he gets that figured out, he'll be a really solid player at the next level. What do you think of the whole OBJ thing? Yeah, I talked about it for a little bit at the start, but yeah. If the price is right, I'm all for it. If not, I think you wait. To me, you look to build through the draft first. If receiver doesn't end up working out for you in the draft, then yeah, go back to the the well there because there's still a lot of players I think worth taking uh, within free agency that you, you can fit to fill if you don't end up getting it through the draft because receiver is really expensive. As you can see, people are getting way overpaid, so I'd rather look through the draft first then come back to it later on. But if they get OBJ for cheap enough, he's still got enough left to the tank. He clearly had uh, understands the scheme when he played with the Rams, who run a similar style offense as the Dolphins. So there's definitely some good things there. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, we had everything I wanted to today. Do some other streams. Probably start streaming more. Go through the draft. Really, probably start. You know, uh, make like a board. At least like start ranking them by position. I probably won't make like a huge big board where I rank every single player, but like at least rank them by position. And then put them like in tiers of where I think they'll go in the draft that we can sort of like weigh that and see uh, who they should, Dolphins should try to be focusing on. And obviously, film breakdowns will be the main thing, but the drafts will be a little more fun. We're drafting another Texas Longhorn. Could definitely see that. And there's a lot of them that can be drafted. Literally, I would be okay if they drafted Murphy, uh, Sweat, Worthy, uh, Sanders. Mitchell probably I wouldn't take Mitchell at twenty one. I would take him at fifty five, but I I wouldn't take him at twenty one. But yeah, uh, thanks you guys for watching, and uh, see you guys next time. Hopefully this stops.